University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, we're about to learn the complete lineup of teams playing in the second round of this competition. 14 institutions have gone straight through and 10 teams have gone straight home. Last time we saw the first of the losers playoffs being won by Emmanuel College Cambridge and tonight the second playoff will decide who will get the one remaining spot in the second round. Now the team from Hartford College Oxford were in the lead for much of their first round match but ended up on level pegging on the last starter question when they saw Clare College Cambridge beat them to the buzzer on a question about people called Robinson, leaving them with 150 points to Clare's 160. Nevertheless, what they knew about the deaths of Roman emperors, indie rock bands and Manet's Spanish influences was quite enough to bring them back for this final chance to qualify. Their average age is 21. Let's get them to reintroduce themselves. Hi, I'm Steffi Woodgate. I'm from South London and I'm studying biology. Hi, I'm Pat Taylor. I'm from Warwick and I'm studying physics. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Richard Tudor. I'm from Stourbridge in the West Midlands and I'm reading history. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm from Orpington in South London and I'm studying English Lit. Now, it was a similar story for Exeter University in their first round match against the University of Warwick, whom they were beating until the final moments when they saw their lead turn into a 15-point defeat at the gong. But that does mean that they come to this playoff with the same number of points in their bag as their opponents tonight, 150 in each case. The composer Wendy Carlos, Landmarks in Krakow, and the Eurasian Oyster Catcher were among their diverse strengths last time. Their average age is only 20. Let's meet the Exeter team again. Hi, I'm Simon. I'm from Hitchin in Hertfordshire, and I'm studying natural sciences. Hi, I'm Will Clintworth. I'm from Woking and I'm reading History and International Relations. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Danny. I'm from Oxford and I'm studying physics. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm originally from Chichester and I'm studying for a PhD in acoustic metamaterials. <laughs> OK, you all know the rules by now, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. Said to reflect the idyllic profiles of many of the offshore jurisdictions whose workings are unveiled, what two-word name was given to over 13 million confidential electronic documents? Hartford Page. Panama Papers. No, you lose five points. 13 million confidential Exeter electronic Wicklet. documents. You can hear the whole Par question. You can Paradise Papers. Paradise Papers is what they were called, yes. <laughs> so you get a set of bonuses on meetings and assemblies, Exeter. What term is derived from the Old Norse for house assembly or council? In modern usage, its plural form refers to proceedings in an electoral campaign. Hosting. Yeah, I think so. Hosting. Correct. What term of North American origin is used for a meeting to nominate candidates for political office or for a faction that aims to influence party policy? C caucus. Correct. Derived in part from the Latin for key, what term is used for a private assembly of cardinals in the Roman Catholic Church? Enclave. No, it's conclave. <laughs> Ten points for this. Originally the name of a park or garden near Athens where Plato taught, what word is now associated in the UK with a type of school that's funded directly by the government rather than the local council and isn't bound to follow the national <laughs> curriculum? Hartford Tudor. Academy. Academy is correct. <laughs> You get bonuses on the British statistician and eugenicist Carl Pearson. Born in 1857, Pearson believed that all knowledge is based on what one perceives through the senses, thus making him a proponent of which philosophy associated with Auguste Comte? Is it empiricism? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Empiricism. 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 No, it's positivism. Pearson invented several essential statistical techniques, including a method to calculate which measure of linear association between two variables. I need a two-word term here. Linear regression. Uh, linear regression. There's correlation coefficient. And finally, Pearson's interest in statistics was stimulated by which eminent British scientist, a cousin of Darwin, He's sometimes known as the father of eugenics. Francis Galton. Galton. Uh, nominate Page. Galton. Francis Galton is correct, yes. <laughs> Listen carefully, I need two answers here. In 1951, Richard Doll and Austin Bradford Hill 
recruited 40,000 doctors for a long-term study that established a direct link between what disease and what practice? Hartford Woodgate. Smoking and cancer? That's correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on doping in sport, Hartford College. At the 1968 Summer Olympics, a Swedish team became the first to lose their medals for doping after one member reportedly drank two beers to calm his nerves before which event of the modern pentathlon? What event? Modern pentathlon. Modern pentathlon. Archery? Should we say archery? No, shooting. Shooting. Yes. Shooting. 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 Okay, yeah. Shooting. Shooting is correct. At the 2016 Olympics, the Kyrgyz weightlifter Izat Artikov was stripped of his bronze medal when he tested positive for what banned substance? It's a poisonous alkaloid which has been used in small doses as a stimulant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pass. Sorry. It's strychnine. In the context of doping, for what do the letters T-U-E stand, referring to situations in which, quote, athletes may have illnesses or conditions that require them to take particular medications? Therapeutic use exemption. Okay. I'm not nominate you yet. Nominate Paige again. Therapeutic use exemption. Correct. Ten points for this. William Grindle and Roger Ascham were among the childhood teachers of which English monarch the latter teacher also served as secretary to Sir Richard Morrison, the ambassador to the Emperor Charles V. Hartford Tudor. Elizabeth I. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on the playwright Lorraine Hansbury. The first drama by an African-American woman to be produced on Broadway, Hansbury's play A Raisin in the Sun takes its title from a poem by which central figure of the Harlem Renaissance? It's not, it's not Iron Lock, is it? Yeah, Iron Lock was it? Is it Alan Locke? No, it's Langston Hughes. Secondly, in 1963, Hansbury was one of a group of prominent black cultural figures who met which politician, then serving as Attorney General, to discuss rising racial tensions in the United States. The meeting ended with Hansbury walking out in frustration. It's, um, John F. Kennedy's... It's Bobby, it's Bobby Kennedy's... Bobby, it's Bobby Kennedy. Yeah. He was Attorney General. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy? Correct. Which civil rights anthem was originally written by Nina Simone and Weldon Irvin as a tribute to Hansbury following her death in 1965 at the age of 34? Strange fruit. No, it's not. What's it? Okay. Nominate Woodgate. I think it's going to rain today. No, it's to be young, gifted, and black. Right, we're going to take a picture round for your picture starter. You're going to see a map on which a major forest has been marked. Ten points if you can give me its name. Uh, Exeter Clintworth. The Forest of Dean. Correct. <laughs> the Forest of Dean is one of England's surviving ancient woodlands. That is, an area that's been continually forested since 1600. Your bonuses are three more forests that contain significant areas of ancient woodland. Five points for each you can name. Firstly, the two-word name of the area of outstanding natural beauty at A. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Not sure. It's not sure. Before. No, I think that's. No, that's a Lundstone. Peak District. Peak District. No, that's Cannock Chase. Secondly, the name of the forest at B. Epping. Nominate Clintworth. Epping Forest. Correct. And finally, the forest at C. Yeah, Sherwood. Mm -hmm. Nominate Clintworth. Sherwood Forest. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. For what do the letters YBA stand when indicating a loose grouping? Who from the late Hartford Page? Young British artists. That is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you're going to set the bonuses on Edouard Manet's 1863 painting, The Luncheon on the Grass, or Le Déjeuner sur l'herbe. Manet's work excited scandal because of the nonchalant way it portrayed nudity. Its theme is thought to derive from the works of Titian and which other Venetian painter, in particular his 1508 work, The Tempest? Giorgione. Yeah. Giorgione was after that. Uh, Giorgione. Correct. The composition of the painting is thought to be based, in part, on a lost work by which Italian? 
His example dominated the academic tradition of painting until the mid-19th century. Raphael? Correct. Which French author was a notable defender of Manet's déjeuner? His 1885 novel, The Work, reflects the Parisian art world of the later 19th century. Uh, Zola. It was Emile Zola, yes. Ten points for this. Developed by the US inventor Charles Goodyear in 1839, what chemical process ah. is used to... Ex-delay. Vulcanisation. Vulcanisation is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the sciences. Firstly, which metric unit was originally intended to be equal to the mass of one cubic centimetre of pure water at four degrees Celsius? Gram. Correct. Along with the Danish actuary Jürgen Gram, which German mathematician gives his name to a widely used algorithm in linear algebra for orthonormalizing sets of basis vectors? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Euler? No, it's Schmidt. Named after another Danish scientist, the Gram stain is used to distinguish between forms of which group of prokaryotic organisms? Bacteria. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Answer promptly, giving the present-day names of the three countries. In addition to Hungary, which countries form the regional cooperation group known as the Visegrad? Exeter Clintworth. Poland, Slovakia and the Czech Republic. That's correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on early Gothic cathedrals. Get them, you take the lead. Begun in 1220 and overlooking the river Somme, the early Gothic cathedral of which city is often described as the largest in France? No, I don't. Nominate Clintworth. Ara. No, it's Amiens. Also begun in the 1220s, independently inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Cathedral of Our Lady is in which Spanish city, the historic capital of Castile? Castile. Uh, it's like North, North Spain. Mm -hmm. um, um, Tarragona. Yeah, I'll try that. Nominate Brown. Tarragona. No, it's Burgos. And finally, a leading example of early English architecture. Which cathedral in southern England replaced a structure at Old Sarum? Salisbury. Yeah. Salisbury. Nominate Brown. Salisbury Cathedral. Correct. Ten points for this. What precise five-word proverb forms the last line of Robert Frost's poem, Mending Wall? Contrasting with the apparent viewpoint of the poet, the proverb in question suggests that defined boundaries give rise to mutual respect. Exeter Lay. Never meet your own heroes. Anyone like to buzz from Hartford? I'll tell you, it's good fences make good neighbours. Ten points for this. The name of two connected palaces in Vienna. What architectural term denotes a structure designed to overlook a scenic area? Its name comes from the Italian for beautiful view. Exeter Brown. Bella Vista. Anyone like to buzz from Hartford? Hartford Tudor. Buena Vista. No, it's Belvedere. Ten points for this. What two-word term refers to both a period of time and a geographical area affected by the severe drought of the 1930s, particularly in the Oklahoma ah. Panhandle? Exeter Lay. Dust Bowl. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Exeter, on agricultural products. All three answers begin with the same two letters. Firstly, originating in Sumatra, rendang is a stew of meat, spices and what versatile tropical food product known in Indonesian as kelapa? Versatile? Mango. Mango is a decent word. Yeah. Mango? No, it's coconut milk. Oh. What name is given to the dried kernel of the fruit of the coconut palm that forms the basis for the production of coconut oil and coconut oil cake? C-O. Cord. <laughs> Cord? No, it's copra. Okay. And finally, what short term is used for the fibrous husk of the coconut when used for making rope or matting? Cord. Cord? Cord? No, it's coir. Oh. We're going to take a music round now. If your music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music written in 1884. Ten points if you can name the composer. Uh, Exeter Lane. Greek. It is Greek, yes, it's part of the prelude from the... <laughs>
Holberg Suite, which was written for the 200th anniversary of the birth of the playwright Ludwig Holberg and used musical forms that would have been popular during his life. Music bonuses, three more exercises in musical nostalgia. Name the composer for each. Firstly, for five, this look back at Baroque courtly dances. Yep, sorry. No, that's Ravel. It's Pavan for a dead princess. Oh, so it is. Secondly, this 20th century attempt to evoke 18th century Spain. Rodrigo? It is Rodrigo, yes. And finally, the composer of this work, written with the aim of sustaining the tradition of the English military band. Vaughan Williams. Vaughan Williams is right. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which two letters begin four words meaning a neotenic Mexican salamander, a statement regarded as being self-evident? Hartford Page. AX. AX is correct. Your bonuses this time, Hartford College, are on Paris. Having first been buried on St Helena, the remains of Napoleon Bonaparte were moved in 1840 to which building complex in central Paris? It's the Pantheon. It's Les Invalides. Secondly, which leading Allied commander was buried at Les Invalides in 1929? He's reputed to have dismissed the Treaty of Versailles as an armistice for 20 years. Sorry. Pass, sorry. It's Foch. And finally, Claude Joseph Rouget de Lille, whose ashes were transferred to Les Invalides in 1915, is noted as the composer of the piece of music now known by what name? The Marseillaise. Yeah, yes, sure. uh, Correct. <laughs> right, ten points for this. What colour links a 1985 film directed by Woody Allen? The first line of Jenny. Hard for Tudor. Purple. Purple is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on elements known since antiquity. In each case, name the element from its position on the periodic table. Firstly, which element appears on the periodic table between indium and antimony and above lead? Tin. Uh, tin. Correct. Which element appears between palladium and cadmium and below copper? <laughs> Silver. Correct. Yes. Finally, which element appears between manganese and cobalt? Iron. Uh, iron. Iron is correct. Another starter question. After a 19th century French engineer, what name is given to the apparent tendency of the path of an object to be deflected when it moves in a rotating coordinate system? Exeter Waitland. Coriolis. Coriolis is correct. <laughs> right, Exeter, your bonuses are on the Indian-born filmmaker Mira Nair. Nair's 2016 film, Queen of Catway, depicts the life of Fiona Mutesi, a chess prodigy born in which African country? Let's go Uganda. A lot of um, people came from Uganda. Between. Uganda? Correct. <laughs> The 2012 film, The Reluctant Fundamentalist, is Nair's adaptation of a novel by which author, born in Lahore, his other works include Moth Smoke and Exit West? She tried Rushdie. No, he was... Islamic, wasn't he? I mean, like, how many, how many others would there be? Could be Yamatel. Thank I, you. I don't know. Just go with Rushdie, I think. Rushdie? No, it's Mosin Hamid. Okay. And thirdly, a 2009 film by Nair concerns which US aviator who disappeared in the Central Pacific in 1937? Amelia Earhart. Correct. Ten points for this. After a Greek letter, what adjective describes a variety of English in which the letter R is pronounced not only in pre-vocalic position, but also before a consonant... Before... Hartford Taylor. Rotic. Rotic is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on South American capitals. Get them, you'll take the lead. In each case, I need the capital and its country. The first three letters of the name of which South American capital 
Spell the beginning of a Latin motto meaning who dares wins. Uh, Quito, Ecuador. Correct. Secondly, which South American capital shares its first six letters with a Roman emperor assassinated in 217? He's noted for the construction of public baths in Rome. Uh, Caracas and Venezuela. Correct. And finally, the last five letters of the name of which South American capital mean I see in Latin? It's Montevideo and Uruguay. Uh, Montevideo and Uruguay. Correct. We're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a still from a biographical film. For ten points, I want the name of the author being portrayed. Hartford Page. Sorry. No, uh, sorry. One of you buzz Exeter. Exeter Lane. Emily Dickinson. No, it's Judy Dench as Iris Murdoch. So um, we're going to take the picture bonuses in a moment or two, and here's another starter question in the meantime. The historic districts of which Asian city include the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of the Red Fort, the uh, Mayans... Exeter Lane. Beijing. No, you lose five points. Hermione's tomb and the Kitab Minar. Hartford Taylor. Uh, Delhi. Delhi is correct, yes. <laughs> that means that you get the picture bonuses following on from Judy Dench playing Iris Murdoch, whom none of you identified. Your picture bonuses are three more stills from biographical films about writers. Again, in each case, I just want the name of the writer in question. Firstly... Alan Ginsberg. Ginsberg. Uh, Ginsberg. Uh, Alan Ginsberg. It is Alan Ginsberg and Daniel Radcliffe playing him. Secondly, oh, oh, PL Travers. Travers. It is Emma Thompson being PL Travers. And finally, uh, Truman Capote. Uh, yeah. Capote. That is as portrayed by Lipsy Moore Hoffman. Ten points for this. In insect anatomy, which organ has the omatidium as its basic functional... Hartford Woodgate. The eye? The eyes are correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonus is Hartford are on the Berlin Wall. In June 1961, which East German leader said, nobody has any intention of building a wall? Construction of the wall began in August. I don't know East German. I can't think of a single one. It's gone. Uh, sorry, no. That was Walter Ulbricht. In a speech in West Berlin in June 1987, to whom did Ronald Reagan address the words, if you seek liberalisation, come here to this gate? Mr Gorbachev. Yeah, Michael Gorbachev. Yeah. Uh, Gorbachev. Correct. The Berlin Wall's checkpoint Charlie is the scene of the denouement of which novel of 1963 by Jean le Carré? Oh, spy, spy, spy came in from the cold. Spy came in from the cold. Correct. There are four and a half minutes to go, ten points to this. How is Armand Jean du Plessis more usually known? A chief minister to Louis XIII, he was nicknamed L'Eminence ah, Rouge. Exeter Clintworth. Cosmel Richelieu. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on India. In each case, give the predominant cardinal direction in which one would travel in the shortest straight line from the first city to the second. For example, Darjeeling to Kolkata is south. Firstly, Chennai to Bangalore. Uh, no, north or south. It's north or south. North. North. No, it's west. Secondly, Varanasi to Patna. No, um, just east. North. No, that's east. And finally, Gur to Pune. North. That is north, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points for this. In the mid-1980s, Tony Blair, John Major and William Hague were successive holders of what ah. office? Exeter Clintworth. Presidents of the Oxford Union. Nope. Uh, you lose five points. Given statutory recognition in 1937. Hartford Tudor. Leader of the Opposition. It was Leader of the Opposition, yes. I think it was John Major went to the University, didn't he? Fifteen points for these bonuses. They're on history. I need the precise year in which the following occurred. The year in each case being a reduplicating number, for example, 1010 or 1919. Firstly, the founding of Havana by the conquistador Diego Velazquez and the accession of Francis I of France. 1515. Correct. Secondly, the passing of the statute against Lollards in England and the start of the Council of Constance. 1414. 1414. Correct. 
Finally, the year in which Sir Thomas Rowe presented his credentials to the Mughal Emperor Jahangir. Seventeen seventeen. No, it's sixteen sixteen. There's a, just over two minutes to go and ten points for this. In the virology of influenza, the letters H A denote which antigen? Hard food wood gate. Um, hemagglutinin? Correct. You get a set of bonuses now on meteorites from the Greek for missile. What six-letter term denotes a large meteor, usually one that explodes in Earth's atmosphere in the form of a fireball? It's like a meteor that explodes. Six, six letters. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, no, sorry. It's a bolide. Secondly, in February 2013, a superbolide was seen over which Russian city? The large fireball was recorded by a number of video and dashboard cameras, and the images were widely circulated on the internet. Come on. Uh, Vladivostok. There's Chelyabinsk. The Hober meteorite, finally, is the largest to be found on Earth, weighing over 60 tonnes. It remains in situ in which southern African country? Yes, Namibia. Namibia. Correct. Ten points for this. From the Greek for common to many, what adjective denotes nouns and pronouns that may denote individuals of either sex, such as person, they, or member? Hard for Tudor. Neutral. Anyone like to buzz from Exeter? Quickly. Exeter Brown. Pronoun. No, it's epicene. Ten points for this. Named after a character created by the playwright Beaumarchais, which French daily newspaper was founded in 1820? Le Figaro. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on US golf courses. The host of a major championship every April, which course in Georgia shares its name with a feminine form of the name of the first Roman emperor? Um, Augusta. Augusta. Correct. The host of the 2012 Ryder Cup match, which course in Illinois shares its name with the second holiest city in Islam? Um, Medina. Medina. Correct. And finally, the host of the 2008 Ryder Cup match, which course in Kentucky shares its name with the Hall of Slain Warriors in Norse mythology? Valhalla. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Writing in 1885, for whom did Tennyson provide the epitaph, warrior of God, man's friend, not here below, but somewhere dead far in the waste Sudan? Uh, Exeter Clintworth. General Gordon. Correct. <laughs> and that was wrong. University have 165, but Hartford College, Oxford, have 215. <laughs> well, bad luck, Exeter. That's a very creditable score, though, so congratulations to you. That's more than you scored in the first round, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. Congratulations to you. Uh, never mind, you're going to have to go, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that sounds harsh. I didn't mean it to sound harsh. <laughs> you did jolly well. I'm sorry you're going. Hartford College, congratulations to you. Well done. We shall look forward to seeing you at the next stage of the competition. Thank you for joining us. I hope you can join us next time for the start of the second round proper. Until then, it's goodbye from Exeter University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Hartford College, Oxford. Goodbye. Hi. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>